This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. Hey everybody, John Reardon here for Nintendo World Report TV. You may have seen our preview of Darksiders Genesis a few weeks ago based on our impressions of the PC version, but now we have the full Switch release in our hands and I am eager to talk about it. If you saw the preview, you should already know that I really enjoyed Darksiders Genesis on PC and suspected that the Switch would be a fantastic platform for it. Now I'll have a full review for you very soon on NintendoWorldReport.com, but in the meantime, I wanted to take a moment to see how the Switch port holds up on a technical level, as well as taking a look at how it compares to the PC version at max settings. Darksiders Genesis runs on Unreal Engine 4, which has had wildly mixed results on Switch. You of course have some excellent titles like Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Hellblade, and Dragon Quest XI, which stand up gloriously to other platforms, and then there are titles like Bloodstained or Hello Neighbor, which look and run much more poorly than their brethren. So I was curious to see where Darksiders Genesis would stand. I'm pleased to say that overall, I'm pretty happy with Darksiders Genesis on a technical level on Switch. While yes, plenty of cuts have been made, overall we're left with a mostly comparable experience that only falters occasionally in a couple areas. Now one of these weaknesses comes in terms of handheld resolution. Darksiders Genesis, like a lot of Switch games, makes use of variable resolution. While docked, this appears to sit somewhere around 720p. While not as sharp as other platforms, it is perfectly serviceable. Handheld, however, can drop much lower. Thanks to the art design of the Darksiders franchise, most of the characters are quite bulky and read well, even at a lower resolution. However, some smaller enemies can become a real problem in hectic situations. The only other area where Darksiders Genesis runs into issues is with occasional performance hiccups that appear to tie into loading new areas. At first, I assumed these stutters were tied to large groups of enemies on screen, but I found that in many instances, even after I had cleared out all the enemies from a given location, I'd still run into frame rate drops in the same area. This seems to relate to loading complex areas of the map, so I assume that is where the issue lies. I should also note that the frame rate issues are much more noticeable when playing in handheld. Now, while these issues are both certainly worth noting, it is important to point out that neither are constant problems. Resolution only becomes annoying in a perfect storm of demanding environments mixed with very small enemies and a distant camera. And while frame rate drops are more common when handheld, they still tend to focus on small patches of specific levels. So while performance isn't perfect, it's reasonable. And in docked mode, it's actually pretty good. But how does it compare with the absolute best Darksiders Genesis can offer up? The PC version maxed out. Beyond the obvious resolution drop, along with the obligatory drop from 60fps to 30fps, Darksiders Genesis makes several other cuts that may sound like a lot when listed off, but taken together produce a surprisingly comparable version of the game. First comes in texture resolution, which while noticeable when placed side by side, ultimately holds up reasonably well thanks to the lower rendering resolution of the game itself. Second is less complex lighting, both in terms of the number of light sources and the removal of dynamic shadows. Players and enemy characters no longer cast a shadow, with the player's shadow being replaced with a gradiated circle. Now this simplistic circle shadow is also present on the PC version when the player jumps to aid in platforming, but in the Switch version it seems to be active all the time. There are also a few rare occasions where characters do cast true shadows, usually during cutscenes, but they are much lower resolution than the PC version. Particle effects are also significantly pulled back. This is most evident on the torches found throughout the game and in the fog effect, which appears very low resolution and can honestly be a little distracting at times. As for the particle effects, while in most instances they're just cut down in density, there are also a few spots, such as when fighting the Dreadwalker, where certain emitters are entirely absent, such as these two torches in the background. The subtle depth of field effect, which pulls near field objects out of focus, along with motion blur, are also absent from the Switch version. Finally, the manner in which water is handled also appears wildly different. I assume this is due not only to changing the effect itself, but the adjustments made to light sources. In particular, 
the same dynamic properties which would drive shadows. As a result, we lose the soft, multicolored lighting from various sources we find on the PC version and are instead greeted with what appears to be a simple, animated specular map with a single light source floating somewhere nebulous overhead. The effect isn't bad, but it doesn't sit nearly as well in the environment, and when viewed from some angles, that specular hit actually moves out of your field of view, resulting in kind of just a flat shaded appearance. It just looks like a solid blob. Now that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? I mean, it is. Plenty of changes have been made, but in most instances, the visual identity of Darksiders Genesis shines through, with perhaps the exception of the water and that very aggressive lowering of the fog resolution. I think it helps that the world and character art for this franchise have always been so strong and stylized that it can lose some of its detail and still hold up. While I wouldn't call Darksiders Genesis one of the best Unreal Engine ports, I think that honor would have to go to Hellblade or Dragon Quest, it certainly holds up as a solid version of the game, and Switch players shouldn't feel like they're missing out on the full experience. Given that Darksiders Genesis also shares an engine and almost certainly quite a few assets with Darksiders 3, this may give us a glimpse at what may be possible for an eventual Switch port of Darksiders 3, which remains the only Darksiders title currently unavailable on the platform. But that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're still not sure about Darksiders Genesis on Switch, keep an eye out for my full review coming soon. Let me know what you think of this port in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Of course, ringing the bell helps us out in making sure our content makes it to you, and if you'd like to hang out with us even more, there's a link to our Discord in the description. Once again, I'm John Rairden, and I will see you next time. This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. Question your wardrobe, but I still think your armor could use some more creepy faces on it. Must everything be a joke to you? The Council. You really need to lighten up. The Council this and the Council that. You want to hear an actual joke? No. Knock, knock. <clears throat> You're supposed to say, who's there? Why would I give away my location? I would simply smash through the door and face my assailant. Uh, you're hopeless.